the Nikki Glazer podcast. Welcome to the show. It's the Nikki Glazer podcast. I'm in St. Louis, Missouri. Guess who's here in studio with me? <laughs> it's me. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. Uh, yeah, I wanted you to guess <laughs> where you were. Brian Frangie is here in St. Louis in studio. He was here this weekend uh, working at a, a local comedy club opening for Adam Conover from Adam Ruins Everything. Um, how was that week of weekend of shows? Oh, great weekend of shows. Yeah. I had a great time. You hadn't done stand up in a really long time. Um, the, well, the last time I did like a weekend was in, was right before my wedding in May, oh, okay. I realized. That's I a for- long time. Totally forgot about that. Yeah. Chris said something pretty funny because Chris and Tim came out to see yeah. the first night of shows. I was going to go, but I was tired. Yeah. That's what I, that's and what I heard. No offense, but I, I, w- I would have liked to see you and then leave, here. but then I would have had to stay for Adams. Not yes. that I don't want to see Adam, but I, I just didn't. I thought you were out of town. I got back in town like an hour before and I was so exhausted, but I did want to see you, but I thought it would be rude if I left right after you. Sure, sure. And not safe for Adam. Yes. So I just missed everything. You you missed everything. But I heard you were so good. I I did a great job. Um, Chris said something that really struck me uh, on the, on the ride home. Cause I was like talking about like, um, you know, getting the rust off and stuff. And, and he was like, it's really hard to be funny. Like, twice a year and i was like yeah you know that's right because i'm like how do i get better at this how do i get better at stand-up and it was like well you gotta it's hard to do it just twice a year and then yes. and it's not like i'm only doing it twice a year but right. like you know i don't I, I don't it's not my priority no it's it's no. yeah it's it, that's is the truth when people dabble in it you can dabble all you want but don't expect to see results no it's like working out it's like singing. It's like playing guitar. I'm not, like I can't be mad at myself for being a shitty guitar player when I play twice a month. Yeah, it's just it's. I'm never gonna grow from that. Um, but it was a good week of shows. You by the end of the week, I bet you felt strong. You I did, felt like, very strong. I was shows. doing all. The, I was like doing bicep curls all weekend. Yeah. And by the end, I was like I can lift a good and you amount. You stayed at Chris's place. Yeah, I stayed at Chris's old place. His old place that he doesn't oh, live in nice. anymore, but yeah. he's like fixing up to maybe rent at some. Which point. is the second time I've stayed there. Isn't without it nice? Him. It's very nice. You stay there longer, more than I have. I've been there. I've <laughs> slept in Chris's I've, bed more than you have. I really, you really have. Oh my it's God. a very classy <laughs> joint because one time I was on Zoom with Chris and I saw the background and I was like, is that, I was like, is that your real background or is that a photo? And he's like, oh no, that's my real background. It's so nice. He yeah. redid his whole kitchen himself. Yes. Himself. And it's wow. like a dream kitchen. It looks like the Zoom kitchen background. It's yes, that good. Exactly. Yeah. Wow. He's but very I'm handy. Amazed easy. you got in there. Like it's a it's an expensive ticket to get into the Convy House. I don't know that many people that have been in there. <laughs> it, oh yeah, he doesn't have many guests over. Oh really? Well, no. I feel very special. And Chris is like the ultimate host. There is there could not be a better host. When I arrived at the house, there was like craft services set up what? in the kitchen I know, with all of, of my favorite snacks. Oh, yes, of course. <gasps> This is what he does. It was absurd. You think he might just do that because you're his girlfriend, but then you find out, <laughs> no, he does, he does it for him. anyone he cares about. He is, he is, um, he's just someone I was telling my dad this weekend because I was hanging out with my dad and we were talking about my relationship and I'm like, he just, he'll do, and this man will do anything for me. Anything. If I were to ask him, yeah, you know, like if I'm in Dallas and he's here and I was like, I forgot my charger. He would overnight, he would overnight, he wouldn't go, just get a new charger. He'd be like, obviously she wants her charger and I'm going to overnight it tomorrow. First thing in the morning, I'm going to go to, like, he goes above and beyond. He goes yeah. the extra um, mile. He does, which we used to call having anal sex. When, when, <laughs> when for some reason, we would always say, not about Do you us, go but the we'd extra say, mile? The, uh, that girl really, I think we watched a porn once where the girl went the extra mile and it was having <laughs> anal. And so whenever I hear that now, that's what that we think That should about. be the phrase for all. For sure. what? Like for, for the world. Everyone should say, I went the extra mile last night. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Like that should be the euphemism. The Hershey well, Highway. Yeah. There's already <laughs> Hershey Highway. Right. Which- and they have, mile mar- they have mile markers. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, we, and, and then last night, I won't go into too many details, but Chris uh, hung out with Bill Maher because he was in town and I wasn't. 
But they went out on the town hobnobbing oh. and had a, a, a boys' night. They yeah. went the extra they mile, not with the, the extra mile. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they went. Um, and yeah, I'll, I'll tell that story at some point if I have permission to do so. But they went out on the town. Um, they went on the the wrong side of town, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> they went out, and that just makes me Are so happy. Are people figure this out? Yeah, I mean, it, now it sounds like they went cruising for hookers, <laughs> which, you know, in many ways, yeah. the, the place they went is where you would go if you wanted to Let's cruise Let's just for put hookers. it this way. They spent a lot of money. <laughs> yes. I wonder how much he did spend. Because yeah. I will say that when um, my boyfriend has been in an establishment like this before, <laughs> a year ago on his birthday, when yeah. I surprised him, yes. he did greet me at the door with a handshake when he didn't know that I wasn't a, 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 a lady of the night. <laughs> That's the most incredible story I've, I maybe have ever heard. Yeah, you hadn't heard, you hadn't heard it on the podcast. I told you just in uh, in person one yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. I, I could not believe that. It is one of my best stories ever. Is yeah. that I did that? People do think I'm a pretty cool chick for doing that. Yes. It's like kind of one of my things where I go, okay, that and putting a gummy worm in my vagina one time because I knew my boyfriend was gonna finger me when he picked me up from the airport, <laughs> and that was his favorite snack. Or? What? D- yeah, different. Chris would <laughs> wow. not be entertained by that. He doesn't want to hear about that. That would not. He would go Clay's. What the hell? Because I I do some gross stuff with him sometimes, but that would have that that wouldn't have turned him on at all. Mm. Yeah, um, he's like these are from my craft services tray. From yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he uh yeah he's a good he's a goodie and he's in another room watching football right now. When yeah. we do this, he's keeping track. Yeah, and you're on your way out. I'm I just got in. I um, I flew from Calgary. This morning, Calgary is so far west. I like forgot how far it is. I had to yeah. go through Minneapolis. I woke up at four a.m. in Calgary, which is Mountain Time here in the states, and then I landed at um, two p.m. Central Time. So that's a good. Um, You're that's all an, over the place. That's an eleven. Uh, yeah, ten hour. Um, nine hour. Something like yeah. I was all over. And we, you do like we, one show in one city one night, and then you go to another city the following night, which is like. Not the way it used to be because it used to be clubs. You just stay in the same For place weekend. all weekend. Yeah, and I used to always go like, "Man, I can't wait." To... Actually, I never said that. I never have wanted more than what I have. I always am kind of happy with what I have. I've yeah. never been like, "I can't wait to play theaters." Uh-huh. I knew it was coming, but I wasn't like chomping at the bit like some people are. Sure. Like I remember when I started doing theaters, Chris got me a cake that said "See you later, clubs," and I was like, "But I've never really had this attitude about clubs." I liked that he said it, but yeah. I also was like. I will be back to clubs because I'm going to age someday and people will forget about me and I will be back in clubs because that's the way it goes. Deborah in fact, Vance. I'm going to be back at clubs. I was just um, thinking that. This, uh, this tour, I'm going to do some clubs. I'm doing the Brea Improv where uh, Brian will be opening for me. Yes. Forget the dates on that. Do you remember? Um, December 4th or something? The yeah. 10th, 4th the Brea to Improv. That's going to be so fun to be back in a club. And then I just found out I'm doing the Tempe Improv November 16th and 17th. Holy shit. Um, I was supposed to be in Vegas those dates, but they got canceled because of the F1 races. So um, instead of being in Vegas, I'm going to be at the Tempe Improv um, on those dates. So um, that'll be, be announced there to see soon. you. Me, Noah, yes. Tempe. That's the other so place. Much. That's the other place I did comedy this year. At, in Tempe, at the Tempe Improv. Oh, I love the name Tempe. Tempe's great. It's such a cute name. Sun Devils. Um. And then, yeah, so I was, we were all over the place. Uh, Anya was with me, um, opened for me in, um, Prior where were Lake, we? Minnesota. Prior Lake, Minnesota, which is like 30 minutes away from Minneapolis, or at least the airport. But it was a, um, it was a casino called That's the Mystic Lake Casino. Mm. One of those cities where you just go, Minnesota. <laughs> like, you yeah, don't you don't say Prior this. Lake, Minnesota. <laughs> like, it, no, everyone would be like, Prior Lake. This is just a it sounds beautiful. Indian reservation that yeah. none of us know the name of. Um, yeah, it was that nice. Was that was show. sold out show. Thank you to everyone for coming out to that. That was felt really, really nice to walk out and see just like a giant fucking room of people who dedicated their night to come watch me and do stand up. And uh, it was awesome. That was a good. And they had like, I like when they had the screens up on the side. Yeah, I, I mug a little bit more. Mm. It's more f- and it's more fun to watch screens. Like when I go see Taylor Swift, I'm watching the screens. Sure. So you see yourself in the screen and you mug more? A little bit. Sometimes I'm like, oh, that's a good angle. Like I kind of like play to it. But yeah, people, I can see the people watching the screen. Uh, And I like that because it does feel like it's a show. It's like more pro. It's more modern. Yeah. Yeah. It was nice. And then the the dinner was really delicious. Oh, God. After that show. Ironically, the only good place to get vegetarian options is at a steak restaurant, turns out. But they do have the best veggie sides. 
Oh my god! Yeah, steak places do have the best veggie sides. You just gotta make sure they don't use butter. Asparagus pee that night. I had. I either don't have the gene to smell the pee, or I don't have the gene that makes your pee smell. So we've determined, or I didn't determine. Scientists determined that asparagus pee smell. Either there are some people who can't smell it, even if the smell is in the air. Yeah, they need the gene for it, and then you also might not even have smell coming from your pee. Because you don't have that gene, so I don't think I have either. Because I've, I, well, I, I, a, I might have the pee smell, but I definitely don't. I'm not able to smell it. I'm so well, glad I'm, that scientists figured that out. You know, they spent their <laughs> valuable time. That's true. Figuring really, out why our pee smells when we eat asparagus. My pee will smell exactly like almond milk, though, when I eat too much, drink too much almond milk. Like wow. it's, what? it's, it nothing. It changes. It's almost Your body as like a pissing almond milk. Nothing. That nothing. M- that means your body didn't absorb <gasps> anything from the almond milk. Oh, that's interesting. A-, a lot of almond milk is just like carrageenan and other emulsifiers. Oh, I know. It's so gross. Chris yeah. started buying this almond milk that has no additives. It has no, what is it? It has no carrageenan. It has no oil. It all has oil in it. Oh, yeah. It's no. so gross. And carrageenan. Have you ever made your own? You can make your own. I would never do that <laughs> to you. <laughs> My friend used to do it and you get like a nut milk bag and you like squeeze it all. I can't make it's not that anything. Great. I just sent you a thing that Bethany Frankel made that I'm like, I could make this. Oh, yeah. Like I, I, I can make a little snack. I mm-hmm. wanted to write you about that because the way she says almond, 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 ah, oh, she A-H- say almond. M-I-N-D, almond. Mm-hmm. Almond. Yeah. yeah. There's she, no L. Yeah, that's kind of annoying. So, someone, I just saw a podcast call out people that say coupon. Coupon? And that has been annoying me. There was a Nate uh, Nate Bargatze clip recently going around and he said coupon the whole time and I was just oh, like, yeah. <laughs> Oh, wait, how do you say- I know that's a dialect. I know that people just say that that way. Two questions. One is, okay. how do you say the fluffy thing that you sleep on? A mattress. I mean, the, the fluffy thing do that they? goes under your head. That goes under your head Hello. That you sleep A on. pillow. A pillow. Not a pillow. It's not a pillow. People say pillow. Pillow. They I don't do know say why. pillow. Yeah. And then all the I think time. Noah might say pillow. You say yeah. You no seem way. like a person that says pillow, Noah. Pillow. Noah doesn't. Pillow. Oh. Okay. Good. Pillow. Thank God. Okay. And then and then you have almond blank. The stuff you were just drinking. Almond. And then how do you say the next word? Milk. Just kidding. Milk. <laughs> <laughs> I don't say, say yeah. milk. People say milk. I know they do. Milk yeah. is an atrocity. Yeah. That is yeah. A, a, a criminal offense. Remember Hannah from The Bachelor? Oh, everything that ended in ing. It's yes. ink. I've been thinking <laughs> like about <a> falling <laughs> in love with you. Every yeah, everything is ink, oh and it's a, it's like almost like a southern thing that I think think it is an Alabama people thing. do. Think. I've been dancing. Yeah, that one. On You've got a word that you say weird. <gasps> what is it? Yeah, you say. Um, Wait, spell it. Uh, v e g a s. Oh. <gasps> oh, I've struggled with this one forever. But I say it, I'm trying to get better. Oh, you're Vegas. Oh, that's correct. But I say Vegas. Yeah, Vegas. I it like sounds Vegas. like it should be Vegas. <laughs> it, yeah. I like Vegas. Uh, Someone has Vegas called, I got called cool. out on that years ago, and then I switched over to Vegas. And I would literally in my head see V A Y G U S because I was so bad about pronouncing it. Mm-hmm. And now I guess I'm back to Vegas. Back to Vegas. I like Vegas. how she pronounces. This part of Los Angeles, L O S space F E L I. But Brian, how do you say it? Oh, sorry. Oh well, uh, I've been I've been called out by a uh, Hispanic person for saying it wrong, and I forgot how they told me to say it. No, that but is I, right, I, Feliz. I would say I would say Los I would say Los Feliz. But everyone <laughs> in LA says Los Feliz, which Los is Feliz. Yeah, I think crime. that's how you're supposed to say it. No, it's not. Really? I forgot what this Eddie. man told me, but he yelled at me Los on the Feliz. street. I don't know why. Feliz Navidad. Yeah, because it's like Feliz means happy in Spanish. Oh. And that's Feliz, like the song. But it, and the name... When you go there, no one's smiling. Everyone's too cool to smile. <laughs> <laughs> Getting back, back to my piss, would you smell yeah. my is. asparagus pee if I pee? Would, would you get dragged yeah. into a bathroom? Okay. 100%. Because I don't, I know. I I don't think it's know. like smells like shit. You know, it just smells like kind of acidic or whatever. It's probably going to smell funky, but it's not going to make me like want to barf, right? No, like it's it doesn't not smell like great. B.O. It smells like B.V. is what it smells yeah, like. Oh, like see, B.V. makes me mm. sick. That just fish one smell. Smell. I just, well, if you yeah, can't smell, smell your own, then you're gonna be able to smell hers. But I might not have the gene that makes the oh, pee, so, so I might be able to smell it. And this would be determining because I this eat, is a test. I ate probably 
40 stalks of asparagus the other night because we ordered, we did a double order and Chris didn't like it. So I ate all of his and I did not smell anything in my pee. But yeah. Chris might have, oh, you know, so Chris might have smelled it from the next room and been like, Jesus Christ. I could know? eat but like it, a half of a half of an asparagus so you and it'll smell. smell. It. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Same. Me too. Okay. Yeah. But Whoa. this is a great thing that Brian brings up. We should smell each other's pee. Like maybe it's genetic to us. Like maybe I can't smell Nikki's asparagus pee. <laughs> But I could no, only because, smell mine. No, you can <laughs> smell it on everyone, I think, if you can smell it. But some people don't have the smell. So you wouldn't be able to, if I didn't have the smell in mind, you wouldn't be able to smell it, even if you could smell it, I, okay. I think. This reminds me of something like it, when I was in college, like when I would make a suggestion of like, you should all go to dinner. And then everyone was, would be like, what the fuck's wrong with you? That's like you suggesting that we should all smell each other's pee. We should all look at each other's vaginas. <laughs> I mean, I was just going to say that on you. Guys think? That's what we used to do. Um, I, before we forget, I do want to say that a bestie came to one of the shows in uh, in St. Louis that I was at this weekend. That's so nice. And she and I don't do like a I don't go outside and stand there and wait for people to say good job to me. I usually mm-hmm. just disappear. Yeah. But she went up to Adam, who was doing a meet and greet, and right. said, "I want to meet Brian." Oh. And then Adam texted me and was like, "You should come out here. There's someone who came to see you." Yay! And oh. I was so flattered and so happy. That's so sweet. I came out and she was there and she's like, "I'm a bestie," and I was like. Are you kidding me? You came here to see me? Are you kidding? Oh, that's so And she nice. was like, yeah, I came to Did see you. Did she tell you that you seem taller in person? Because people can't believe how tall you are. Oh, well, I'm not that tall. Well, you're six foot. One. I'm five eleven and a half. Oh. I've never made it to six. Okay, well, you come off tall like uh, Anya and Noah, or Noah, I think, but bo- both of them yeah, thought you were shorter. Us. They thought yeah. you were around five eight. Height. Yeah. Oh, no, no, shorter. No. Oh, wait. You thought he was like 5'4"? I thought he was tiny. I thought he was a tiny wait, guy. Wait, let's go through our heights because people don't know. I'm 5'9". Um, Brian, you're 5'11 five five eleven eleven and, and a half. half. Anya's 5'2". Brian, you've Sorry. never met me. So what do I project? Like, what am I presenting to you? Yeah. Um, what uh, am I serving? Yeah, you seem <laughs> like a, a tall, thin. Like, you're, you you seem shorter <gasps> like because... 5'9"? I think... I, I wouldn't be shocked if you were 5'9". Not at all. Oh, Actually, I think Nikki is much joy. taller. I, I always thought Nikki was much taller. Yeah, in Nikki reads five eleven. You read like you could play basketball. Thanks. Usually people say you're much taller than I thought, but then recently I've been getting you seem taller on TV. So I don't know what to, yeah. to think about it. Oh, interesting. I want to be five ten, just like Taylor Swift. Yeah. Like, I just we used to say Noah was Cindy Crawford five, at the end of that. But I've met Noah. I've seen Noah in the flesh Noah's a five, thousand four? times. Brian, what do you think my height is? I think. I mean, uh, I do believe you're short. That based on, I, even though I've never met you, I, I, you, you see, your personality is that of it's a short, short person. Comes short. Yeah. Okay. I wouldn't say. Uh, that. I would say you're a spinner. Like I look at you and I'm like, she's a spinner. Like, so short. Means, it means like it's a thing guys say. Like you want to put this. You could put them on your dick on, and, on your and then you could just spin them around. S- spin them around. Because they're so you small. You are that. A hundred percent. That is a compliment, right, Nick? <laughs> I like it. Yeah. Okay, oh my five, god. Three. <laughs> yeah, because you're because Noah's incredibly nice. And then she could also destroy you. And that's what a short person's personality yes. is, I think. Right, yes. But how tall are you, Noah? 5'3". Five, 5'3". Three. Five, the three. same. Yeah. And w- Anya? 5'3". I'm probably like five, five, You're five, three, three quarters. Three? Yes. Are you shocked? Oh, my God. <laughs> if, I, if you were to ask me who is taller, I would say Anya without question. Wow. The fact that they're the same height is, okay, is I baffling. Was, this makes me happy because that means I'm cuntier sounding. And when I was on the radio for, you know, as a DJ, I would meet people all the time in San Diego that would be like, oh my God, no offense. And this is such a weird piece of feedback. I thought you were like a bigger brunette. <laughs> what does that mean? A hundred percent of the people that would say, I thought you looked different would it all so say to meet a bigger on brunette. Radio. Yeah. Radio people's yes. voices. I mean, now we can kind of see everyone because of social media, but like back in the day, oh, you would meet someone from the radio. I fell like, in love. What the fuck? And Ooh. then you met her. And I felt there was a uh, back years and years ago, I was listening to some random podcast off of NPR or something. And the person's voice was like, I think I need to meet this person. Like, I'm, I'm in love with this person. Yeah. Um, and then I did wind up seeing a picture of them and I was like, I don't need to meet them. Yeah, I don't think I need to meet them actually. I know, was and it was this disappointing to me because I'm like, now I know the face, the voice, and it would be nice if I just imagined whatever I wanted. Yes, with the voice. Yes. Um, 
Um, but can I just say this, really quickly? Mm-hmm. Her name was Jessica H. That was the bestie oh. that came to the show. So shout out to Jessica H. Shout out to Natalie <laughs> and Maddie and uh, Alan, who are the names of the uh, the besties who I met last night, or maybe the night before too. Um, and and who and there were some other besties who gave me presents and stuff. Like so many came out and uh, and gave me cards and a little picture frame and so many nice things. And and we just love it so much. So thank you so much for doing that. And if you makes, are a bestie and you're trying right. to do the thing where you get into the show for free and you've come alone and all that, don't wait. If there's a long line in front of me and you're waiting to be polite, just Cut ahead of the line and just quickly be like, Anya, can I get into the show really quick? I came alone. Yeah, because there no were one a few think besties that were waiting in a very long line that uh, almost missed the meet and greet. So just, just do that. I promise yes. you, it'll be fine. Yes, that's that's good. Thanks, no, Anya, for saying that. All right, we got to go to break, and we'll be back with more after this. All right, we're back. Um, there is a new Nikki Pod memes. That just came up. Whoever does that, thank you so much. We love it. And this one is um, like a drawing of a man, and there are three different ones. And it says headache, and his like a head, his head has like a red spot on it. Stomach ache, and then there's like red where his stomach is. And then Brian is just the whole man is red. <laughs> it says where does it hurt? Um, I just can't wait until that's not true. Uh, I know. Yeah, one day. What are you at today? Oh bad it's been really yeah but uh i do want to say never tell us who you are nikki pod memes creator like it's just like the voice we don't want to know what you look like we don't want to see your face we don't want to know who you actually are we just want to imagine five (laughs) ten you might you you feel like a person who's five ten but we just want to imagine you the perfect version of you is in each of our heads as a different thing so you're going to disappoint one of us if you reveal your identity. I never get worried about Nikki Pod memes of doing of making me upset or offending me. In yeah. Any way. yeah, and that I feel really safe with it because I don't think <laughs> yeah. many meme accounts would make me feel no. safe. I'd, it's like when someone does an impression of you where you're like, okay, <laughs> I can't wait for this, but you're just like waiting for something really offensive to happen. So but Nikki Pod means you never disappoint me. I'm never like, what's this going to be? It always makes me feel good. Um. There was one meme you did once where Chris saw it and was like, will you explain this to me, to me? Oh. Because it was like, um, it about was something him. about Chris going on like some expedition and then me pulling up Tinder. Cause I had made the joke, mm. like oh. if he dies doing so, like, okay, babe, go like scale <laughs> mountaintops, but I'm going to pu- like go get back on Raya. Yes. And so once I explained it, he was fine, but he was like, you want to tell me what this means? And it, <laughs> I kind of liked it. Cause I was like, are you scared to lose me? <laughs> Sometimes you want to feel a little jolt of like your partner's a little, uh, it, territorial. Of, of you. course. Yeah. Feels nice. You gotta light that. That's a spark. Yeah. When they hit you, it means they love you. <laughs> They're scared yes. to lose you. <laughs> that's why they keep your car too yeah um but uh yeah it was a fun weekend what about think of any your airport experience you said that there was like a family there oh yeah there, okay so there was like a family at my gate today that i was at first it was like a husband with the nanny and the kids right and at first i was trying to clock if he like had a crush on the nanny if they were like flirting at all and there was like some light flirting but it didn't bother me i was like i don't think it could have just like flirting is very it's there's there's a fine line. Yeah. Cuz he could have just been being nice and she could be laughing sure. at what he says and I'm like I am painting this whole like I just read this Esther Perel, you know, article mm. about cheating and how it doesn't mean that your marriage is unhealthy necessarily. It's just a lot of people cheat just to find another part of themselves or to like have a kind of adventure and it has nothing to do with your partner and like not satisfying a part of you. Like there's nothing they can do to like actually uh, give you that thing that they need, which is like, I just need to feel alive for a little bit. I need to shoplift. I need to do something wrong. I need to smoke cigarettes behind the shop class or whatever. Mm-hmm. You know, like you just want to feel bad and like there's nothing your partner can do to like give you that. So it's has, it really has nothing to do with your partner. So I, I liked this article that I read about it because I'm, I'm interested. I think, and I posted it on my Instagram of this um, article called Why Happy People Cheat. Yeah. And I thought it was interesting because it's just an, to me, I it doesn't mean that I'm like, I'm going to cheat or I want Chris to cheat or like, I think Chris is cheating or I'm cheating. Like, I don't want be anyone to think that because I'm posting this, I'm like in favor of cheating. I just like subject matters that are taboo, uh, seemingly, even though so many people are doing them or it's happened so much. And I was listening to a Dax Shepard podcast with Esther Perel, and he said a really interesting thing, which is like, you know, we talk a lot about addiction on this show. We talk a lot about um, eating disorders and uh, things like that. 
But he's like, I think infidelity is the subject matter out of all the things we talk about that are taboo that affects more people than all of them. Mm. And I thought that that was such a true statement that they're cheating. People don't talk about it, but it's happening all the time around us. Yeah. And people don't have, people can quit and then never talk about it again. So it's like it can be happening and never get addressed. It's almost not like an addiction in terms of it's always going to spiral out of control. Like addictions are kind of always on a slippery slope. It's eventually you're going to reach a bottom. Like you can't do it forever. It's going to like raise some red flags. Cheating can happen, then it go dormant, happen again. Like little things pop up here and there. It can be a one night stand, and it happens all the time. And I think I think that's why I'm drawn to it. Is I'm fascinated by things that are happening a ton, and everyone's like, "No, I would never do that. No one in my family has ever cheated. We never cheat. Cheating's the worst thing that you could ever do." And it's like mm. it's people equate it with like a hit and run as how bad it is, mm. uh, of or a murder. And it's way more common. In fact, your listener, yeah, your like parents probably have done it. It's like a stop sign. <laughs> it's like it, everybody it, does. Yes, thank you, Anya. It is totally rolling a stop sign. And I think that the data around it is just, uh, you know, that's why I like talking about molestation because this weekend Chris was like, hey, if you're going to talk about this and maybe give some stats on stage, because I say one in four people were molested, but I don't even know where I heard that. Mm. He was like, you should probably look that up and like give the actual stat. So I want to say the actual stat, and this is only self-reported. Sure. Which, So let's be honest. Yes. Sexual abuse self-reports are not telling the whole story because there's so much shame around it. Or but people it don't even realize. One in five women were molested before the age of, you know, uh, 18. So wow. like one as children, five? one in five, and then one in 20 men. And I I would venture to guess that number for men is way higher because women have a lot more. Um, yes, uh, we, we have a lot more opportunity to talk about our sexual assaults, uh, and it's it's less taboo for us to speak of Absolutely. getting sexual assaulted than men. So I would venture to guess it's more like one in ten for for yeah. men. Um, but anyway, so I was kind of. Hardy had my mind around like cheating or whatever. And so I'm watching this like dad and he's taught, he's like, girls, do you want to call your mom? It's two little girls. And this one little girl, I had just done the wordle and I had like failed really miserably at it. It was like a bad one today. I like didn't get it and mm. I failed. <sighs> and, um, and five guesses couldn't get it. Damn. And this little girl's probably like oh, no. seven. And sh I hear her like working it out. She's like, mom, can I, or maybe it wasn't, it was a different little girl. Cause she asked her mom. So it was a, this is a different family. Sorry. They were all kind of together. She's like, mom, can I do the wordle? Or like maybe to her babysitter. Can I do the wordle? And she and the, she pulls up the wordle and on her iPad. And the girl's going, so it's either minge, binge. And I was like, I wanted to go like, it's binge. It's binge. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, how did I not get binge? That's like one, one of the thing I think about doing all the time. Um, but this little girl got it. And then she went over to dad and she was like, see, dad, it could either be this one or this one. She was so smart. I was like, this girl might save us from climate change. Yes. <laughs> like, this is our future. I kind of believe in, in things How now. old was she? Like seven. And probably she figured six. out binge? Jeez, yeah. Damn. She knew the word binge. I was like, wow. Her mom So then, because when she started the Wordle, I was like, there's no way she's going to get No, that. a seven-year-old? She's year too young to understand the, the depths of that disorder. And then I go, wait, there's lots of binging for like entertainment. Maybe it's yeah. seeped yeah. in somehow. Um, now we use that word kind of, you know, for TV and stuff. Maybe more young people are using that word because of Netflix and stuff like that. And we just don't realize it. Maybe it's more common. Maybe it was top yeah. of mind for her. Yeah, I that's what is. I was thinking. It could be yeah. just very... She got lucky. Uh, yeah. She's not going to solve anything. <laughs> She's no <laughs> so <then>, smarty. <laughs> but she was so cute. And I was watching this family and I was kind of having the thing of like... Oh God, I'm like this older woman who's passed up on this opportunity. And I'm like kind of looking at this family like, oh, that could be me. And I could be helping my daughter like with the wordle and talking to her about it. Like it seemed kind of fun. And then um, and then I saw the dad talking on the phone to the mom. And the mom, he first of all, he answers the phone, and he goes, he go he goes, Hey. Or he didn't answer the phone, he calls her, he goes, I just want to ask you, when do, do you think our kids have ever been to the Cheesecake Factory? You could tell she was like, what are you talking about, John? And she, he goes, no, it's a, it's a simple question. Have our kids been to the Cheesecake Factory? And then she's again like, what are you saying? He's like, nope, it's just one question with one answer. <laughs> Have our children been to the Cheesecake Factory? Now, his children are a seven-year-old girl and a four-year-old boy, approximately, maybe five-year-old boy. And he goes, because they haven't. They haven't. We were driving. We drove past one. And she asked, is there cheesecake in there? And I go, what are you talking about? Is there cheesecake in there? So we took them for breakfast today. And I was like, oh, the nanny went with you. to And and, and it's like 1130 and they're at their gate. And I'm like, you went to the cheesecake factory like 9 a.m. It was very confusing. Before a flight? Yeah. yeah. So then I kind of like this guy's demeanor with the mom, though. He seemed like a funny dude. And 
And then at one point he says to the daughter, um, Reese or whatever her name is, uh, do you want to do recycling club after school? Which is an adorable club. <laughs> and I'm thinking this girl can save the world. Yes. Do you want to do recycling club after school? And she goes, um, she looks up from her iPad. And she's like, um, yeah. Yeah, I do. I do. And I thought that was so cute that she's like, yeah, I want to say it. She goes, after school? Yeah, yeah. And so he goes, yes, she does want to do it. And she goes, wait, 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 dad, dad, dad. What? Then who's going to pick up Owen? Owen needs someone to pick him up. And he oh, goes, no. don't, don't worry, we, we've got it. Like, But I was like, this is my daughter. Yeah. That's me. Always worried about like her little brother, but who's going to pick it? Like she's trying to figure out older daughter symptoms of like trying to figure out the whole thing. Like worrying <laughs> about all the puzzle pieces when really your job as a seven-year-old, do you want to go to recycling club or not? You don't need to worry about who's going to pick up. She's a, like, oh, we have swim practice on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Yes. And I just was like, oh, this girl is in a, like, I just know what her life is going to look yeah. like. Always taking care of everyone else. I was like, then I just just determined that one of her parents is probably an alcoholic. I, I like knew. Ever yeah, because run she has to take on that responsibility. Say. She has to figure out, oh, Owen's going to get forgotten. That yeah. happened once and then she never let that go and now yep. she's like, every time there's an issue, I need yep. to be on top of it. Yeah, like I was obsessive about my sister being kidnapped because I just thought my parents were a little too free with her. Yeah. And the, I had learned about kidnappers and I knew I wouldn't get kidnapped because I was smart and vigilant and um and not that cute. And I knew my sister was adorable and kind of like just toddling around and, mm. and would probably attract one. And I was obsessed with it. Obsessed. And my parents didn't care at all. Doesn't that suck that in order to create that kid that you're like, this could be my daughter. I would love this kid. She had to go through some kind of trauma to, to become that yes. person. Yes. Otherwise, she'd just be, out. yeah, I'll do recycling. Or she would be like, no, I don't want to do recycling club. She'd be like on her iPad, not even look up when he spoke. Yep. But because is- she's got an alcoholic parent, she's like a perfect child. Yeah. Because they're at the Cheesecake Factory boozing it up. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They can't believe they haven't brought their daughter to the Cheesecake Factory <laughs> at 7 a.m. <laughs> well, they could be any kind of aholic, you know? Maybe they. That's what I mean. Like exercise aholic. Yeah. They have some kind of a- addiction in their ho- house, which who the fuck doesn't? Yeah. Right. Exactly. Everyone does. Well, but, what I want to know is what was the why was the mom so hesitant to give up the information of whether or not the children were at the cheesecake factory? I think she was just like, factor. why is my husband so, being so cheeky right now? Like, why did he not say hello and he just answered the phone with like he's just being this weird guy that he is? Of like, he was trying to be funny. Okay, okay. You know, like I thought I kind of liked their dynamic. It was almost like flirty. Yeah. Of like our kids haven't been to the cheesecake factory, and then, but then this is what I'm plagued by when I do see young girls or young boys is like. All I can think about, almost all I can think about is what you're saying exactly of like how much they have to go through. Like they have to yeah. have a first crush. They oh. have to have someone make fun of them. Yeah. They have to um, worry about a test that means literally nothing. Yes. They have to worry about college that means literally nothing. They have to worry about, they have to, you know, make figure friends. out what shoes go with what jeans. They have to like pl- spin the bottle. They have to study like w- what they're going to do with their tongues when they make out. Oh, yeah. They have to like stay up all night they thinking about that. that. They don't know. They have to learn every lesson. They have to learn. They have to intern somewhere yeah. and not That's make life. any money. That's life. It's all life, of us but have it's. To do, go through it. No, I, I don't to want ni- it. I don't Nikki want it. I want them to skip it. <laughs> no, life sucks. That's life what we're sucks. saying. That is what I'm we saying. We don't want the kid to have to go through life. I saw a meme the other day that said, um, Thank God uh, you only live once. I can't do this <laughs> shit again. <laughs> and I so really like it. Shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When I get jealous of the youth, I always, I think that's maybe a defense mechanism because I have such jealousy of the young people and like, wow, they get to do a whole life and they get to have all the fun that I had as a kid. But then I think about all the things that they like are going to go through. I just want to say that I have a memory And this is maybe one of the reasons I don't want to have kids because my envy issues are so exhaustive and so crippling to me. I'm not joking you, and I probably referenced it on the pod before, but I promise you I can now track it to the day I said it. I was in bed with my mom. It was after school. We were probably watching like some kind of like daytime TV show. Fourth or fifth grade. Third, fourth, or fifth grade. I'm guessing it was third. Because I remember being very, very young and my mom being like almost guffawing that I said this. And I said to her, Oh, yeah. I've said this before, I think, but I think this is actually who I am. I said, um, 
because she's might have said something like, well, when you have kids, you'll do this. And I go, I'm never going to have kids. And she was like, why? And I was like, because I'll be jealous of them because they're younger than me. Wow. And she said, what? And I go, you're jealous of me because I'm younger than you. You have to be. How can you not be? I'm that younger. I'm fucking tinier. Crazy. I'm <laughs> in third grade. I'm like, I have like third or fourth grade. I just knew being How young you know? is the best. Yeah. How could you not know? Everything in our society is about being young and youthful. And I remember, and I just remember being like, mom, are you jealous of me and Lauren? And her going, why? And the only reason I remember this is because of her reaction being so crazy. Yeah. And her going, why would you ask something like that? That's insane. No, I'm not. And I remember being You're bullshit. like, but look at my abs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember being, I was tiny. Collagen. I was so little. Collagen. Yeah, I had my whole life out of me. I already <laughs> heard her complaining about cellulite and wrinkles and things that's like it. that. Like that's so I I honestly do think I don't think I would struggle with it because I think when you have a kid, you're just like, this is my kid. I'm not jealous of my kid. But we know that there are moms who are jealous of their kids. Yeah. And they try to dress like them and they try to hang out with their kid, you know, like if there was a I'm way scared that I would be jealous I could of my kid. Absorb the youth from a child and steal it from them. I would do it. Vampire. Yeah. I yeah. would take their youth. Well, vampire, at least you give them eternal life. But if I could you know, if I could just take the youth and then and then I have their youth and then they <laughs> fade away. Yes. <laughs> I, I don't I could especially when I'm in my eighties or something, I don't know if I could say no to that. I, I don't even, I, I mean, they're going to have to, to die be honest, somehow. Yeah. Like, I mean, have you heard of Juvederm? Nah. <laughs> yeah. Where does that come from? <laughs> it's like an episode of uh, Charmed. Like there's like a, a yes. demon can suck the the youth out of somebody and then they it's turn into an old person. Right? Yes. And then one you're time, young and you're beautiful. One time mm. I was uh, in a cab in Los Angeles going to the airport and the lady that was driving me was telling me that there's like an underground in Hollywood that has all of that. So... <laughs> Can oh, you really? guys ever get jealous of young, like when you see young gr- girls and kids, do you ever get jealous of all the fun they get to like have in their mm-hmm. life that you have already said goodbye to? I get jealous of you and your high school girlfriends and your high school experience because it sounds I think that's amazing. maybe why I struggle with it is because I had so much fun in my childhood. I had a you really good childhood. And I think songs. a lot of people don't have great childhoods and I had so they, the most fun in my early 30s so I get jealous of like early 30 year olds interesting wow. okay that tracks I get I jealous get of Poppy I thought I was gonna get jealous of when she entered into our lives when my sister had a little girl I was like oh this is gonna test me like yeah. am I gonna be jealous and I'm I never get jealous of Poppy until I remember that she doesn't have to like figure out a talent yet like she doesn't even have to she could still be the best at something. Like she could be Taylor Swift and she doesn't have to pick up a guitar for another like How old is she? 7 years. She's like 4. Okay. So she has to she has to It would to be start helpful if she focusing. figured it out soon. I well, yes. we're trying to get her to pick something. <laughs> yeah. And then force. Once they pick it, you're like that's it. You're never switching. I don't care how sad you get. Yes. That's well, what I would do. <laughs> <laughs> like when you sent me that meme of the little Korean child playing a perfect yes. guitar, I was like I'm jealous. I yes. want that. I'm envious. Yeah. Most parents just want their kids to be happy. Like my my parents would always say, I just want you to be happy. I don't care what you do right. or whether you're successful. I was like, couldn't you just want me to be sad and rich? Like, why didn't you force me to become the best whatever? That doesn't Instead, work. you just let me quit piano? You let no, me go to school for theater? my parents theater? for me. It doesn't work, Brian. <laughs> no, this is what I would tell my kids. And I think this is, this is actually good parenting advice from someone who's never going to have kids and really hasn't even considered what I would do if I did. So take it with a grain of sand. Um, you tell your kids, I want you to be happy. But here's the thing. Talent is not something that is going to come out of nowhere. If you want to be good at something, you have to work hard. And I think that obviously parents go, yeah, I mean, me telling my kid to go to piano lessons, that's me telling them to work hard. We don't, kids don't understand that from piano lessons, therein lies, you're going to be great at this. And then you'll be happy. It just seems, and then you'll be happy. Yes. It just seems like a chore of doing a thing I'm bad at still and just I'm not going to get good and you just have to you know practice makes perfect we I used to sing songs about practice makes perfect you'll see like there were all these songs but it didn't get in my head I wish someone would have said Nikki you can be that on TV you could be Kelly Kapowski whatever I was like you know looking at at the time but she is only that 
because she's hotter than you. No, she's only that <laughs> because she worked hard. Yeah. And that's the only thing you have to do. I didn't compute the two. Yes. And I don't know how to get kids to understand what hard work is and what it can mean because they don't have... They don't understand time. Really. No, well, that's exactly right. The time thing is important too, because you know how, like, when you wake up in the morning, like your first like thirty minutes of just getting out of bed, time goes by like much faster. Like that first thirty, like if if in that first thirty minutes you decide to like work out immediately, that workout will go by so fast it will not be challenging. Interesting. That's that's my experience. I guess I'm just saying everyone awake, experiences yeah? this. You're like kind of half awake, so if you just do the thing that like. You would be dreading if it was 3 p.m. It'll oh, just be done yeah. instantaneously. Right, right. You won't even realize. And that's like yeah. being a kid. It's like you have nothing going on. Time is different <laughs> for you. If you are just put in a room and forced to practice for 10 years, yeah. that time will not matter to you at all. It'll just fly by and all of a sudden you'll be the world's greatest whatever. It's so true. That's a good point. Sometimes when I'm on a treadmill and I... I'm like dying and I have five minutes left. I always go, you dumb fuck. Why didn't you start five minutes earlier? Cause you'd be dumb right <laughs> done right now. Like, and then I go, wait a second in a different realm. I am done right now. Like I am, I'm going to do this. Yeah. So just know you're done somewhere. Like yes. that. If you, if you struggle to get through workouts, just tell yourself you're done it's five o'clock somewhere. somewhere. It's just, it's just not there yet. But yes. like, and also another thing, and I've talked about this before, if you're trying to start working out and you're like, you're in the first two minutes and you've like, oh my God, I have another 28 minutes of this workout. Um, just keep, just keep thinking you're on the last minute or like just, and just keep saying 15, I'll quit in 15 seconds. Keep yeah. adding another 15 seconds. And then also Gaslight if you're yourself. someone like me, who is like, <laughs> if you're not doing it at the ultimate level, if you're not running the whole time, then fuck it, then give up. Just Take it down one mile per hour. Like, don't give up. Just go slower yes. and stay with it. Yeah. Because I used to give up. I've given up on so many workouts because I couldn't do them the, the best. Mm. But just take it down one notch and then you can get back up to that. I mean, this obviously goes, I'm not like David Goggins in here. This is like <laughs> not that interesting of information to give. But like, I wish I could, I, I wish I could have told myself these things earlier because I, I, it took me until this year to start just going a little less hard on my workouts to get through them. Yeah. And these are things that you could tell a child and, and they would have to, they would, they don't know. Shake like this. You're still learning this stuff now. Like as an adult, like, oh, if I just try it a little less hard, I could get through my whole workout. Yes. Like that you're, you're always learning stuff. And like you, this is all stuff that I would want to like brain dump onto my child when they're five years old so they have to I kind of want to have a kid just so I can like relay some of this shit you know yeah. like and see if I could test what out I how to out. make a Taylor I want to make a Taylor Swift I want to like leave us with this before we go to break because I've been reading that four agreements book you know oh god about like yeah. be be whatever with your word <laughs> mindful with your word agreements. Yeah. I'm disagreeing. No, they're they're <laughs> legit. I mean, they are the way of life. If you are able to agree to the four agreements and keep that agreement, your life will be perfect. Mm. Oh, yeah. But, I liked the thing you sent us. Yeah, this chat. is the thing. Whatever people do, feel, think, or say. Now, this is um, don't take anything personally. That's the third agreement, I think. Don't mm -hmm. take anything personally. Whatever, this is the paragraph. Whatever people do, feel, think, or say, don't take it personally. If they tell you how wonderful you are, they are not saying that because of you. You know you are wonderful. It is not necessary to believe other people who tell you that you are wonderful. Don't take anything personally. Even if someone gets a gun and shoots you in the head, it was nothing personal, even at that extreme. I want us to ruminate on that and talk about it when we get back right after this. All right, we're back. Okay, a book can tell you not to take anything personal or personally. How the fuck do you put that into practice? You don't. That's why this book sucks. It tells you <laughs> all these things to do. Don't ever lie. D don't, don't be impeccable with your word. The other ones. Um, I forget the other <laughs> the ones. That's because they're, they're, they're pointless. The other ones are Don't make memorable. assumptions. That's a don't big make one. Don't make assumptions. It's like, yeah, if you if you could monitor your own life, like, you know, 100% of the time and make and calculate every single thought and action that you have, then sure, maybe your life will improve <sighs> incrementally. But you just can't live your life like that. Well, I have a girlfriend who whose boy, her and her boyfriend were, you know, getting into little tiffs here and there. And mm. she goes, 
hey, let's just do this experiment for the next day where we don't take anything we say personally. Sure. And I and I remember, and she said it worked. And I'm like, but how? How do you not take things personally? And, it, and what what the book goes on to say is that when someone is saying something bad about you and if someone says, hey, Nikki's not funny, that's their own opinion. It has nothing to do with me. It's built upon what they think. But sure. But I don't understand why it won't affect me because I need public support to That's make money and mm. I need a roof over my head and I need money to have the that. The reason so, you are successful is because you've been taking things personally your entire <laughs> life. Exactly. <laughs> but if I were to be an artist who just does every, like someone like Natasha Leon, oh. who everyone just, uh, who admires because she's just herself. Cara Delevingne. Yeah, if I just was someone oh, like God. that who just never takes anything, like who seems to just be their own unique person um, what would I be? Because, you know, there are times where people don't like the things I do, but as long as I'm confident about that thing, I don't really care what their opinion is. So mm-hmm. I guess okay, what so the point is, is that. I have a spin on that for agreement. It's like a, a, a mantra that I live by, which is, or try to live by. Okay. Don't let people, don't give people the power to influence how you feel. Mm. Sure. So I think that kind of goes. How do you do that saying, though, Nikki? Noah? Can you give an example like when you've used that when maybe you would have been um, completely hijacked by opinion someone had of you or like what you could do with that? I think it maybe for me it's more like matching someone's energy and that's kind of like a codependent thing where Mm. um, if someone else doesn't feel good about something then I feel like I have to fix it or I have to feel bad about it. So I think I struggle with that. Maybe... Um, that mantra is something that I try to repeat in my head if I talk to my mom or something where it's like, well, Mm. I don't have to, just because she's not feeling good, I don't have to change anything about my lifestyle to make her feel better. Right. That's how I apply it in my my world. For me, it's like, if I'm around someone in a bad mood, it can radically affect me. And I don't think most people have Mm. that. But that's where I'm like, okay, this person's in a shit mood. Yes. I do not have to be in a shit mood. Like, yeah. let them be in it. I yeah. forgot the term, but else. there is a term for that. It's it's like some kind of mirroring. I forgot what it was called. Yeah. Sorry. I feel the same way. But that is a thing. No, I. Uh, it's interesting because Chris, if he's in a bad mood about something, I can't really handle it. And I need to, I take it personally. Like, mm-hmm. talk about, and it, it, it will have nothing to do with me, but... Because he's in a bad mood. Like, you know, people in a bad mood about something, they're not going to be cheery to everyone they're around. And it has nothing to do with me, but like he might be just not smiling Shorts. as much or whatever or not laughing at my jokes because he's just not in the mood for my and jokes. And you're trying to read, you're reading into that. And I'm thinking- and Figuring out. He, it's, he's never going to come back to me. You know, he's mm-hmm. never going to, yes. this is going to be forever. That's you would apply that mantra, I think. The, yeah, assumptions. Th- that's, that's catastrophizing. That's where, uh, so, yes, I'm yeah, um, totally. I'm making assumptions that he's never going to get better, which, you know, is probably something from my childhood. Who the fuck knows? Um, but then I notice when I get into bad moods, I, he is able to, he doesn't do that. And I will, sometimes when I get in a bad mood, think that he's going to have the same response I do. And I go, hey, this has nothing to do with you. I say all of these things to make him feel safe and almost giving him the things that I would want him to say to me if that were the case that I, that totally. I, I need to hear kind mm. of when he's in those moods. But he doesn't need to hear it from me. He doesn't need to hear like, this has nothing to do with you. He's like, I know, I know. Why would I? <laughs> he's like, obviously. <laughs> I think it's a guy girl thing sometimes because I have mm. the same thing when Matt's in a bad mood. Sometimes I'll ask him a question. Let's say he's in physical pain. And I'm like, hey, when are we going to this? And he'll be like, I don't know. And I'm like, oh. easy, Jesus, you know, like, what is this tone? And he's like, yeah. babe, I'm stressed. It hasn't. And I'm like, but you're talking to me like you're pissed. He's like, I'm in pain. I'm like, well, you need to fix this because this tone is not cool. But yes. I just have to like let him be short with me and mm-hmm. go away. And I. If you're I always do that, short with him because you're short. <laughs> I'm five three. We found out that that's But, but nine times out of ten, he'll be like, babe, I'm sorry. I was short with you earlier. I'm in a lot of pain. You know? That really helps. Chris, the other day, not the other day, but weeks and weeks ago, was um, got, uh, yeah, it, it was it was something personal. It was like something I said that upset him, and he he made it clear very quickly, like, what it was about, which is a growth, because I think usually in the past, like like many people in my life, or men in my life as well, 
will like just kind of like just get a little quiet because they're still processing it. They don't want to tell you they're mad at you yet. But he was like open to me about like this thing you said kind of upset me. And I, I think in the past I used to go like, I'm so sorry. Like, how can I fix it? Like, like damage, like uh, just taking on all the blame. Like, just let me make it right. So we're like in a good mood again. Like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And I just, I did that a little bit. I like I accounted for what I did do wrong. But I also was like, I'm annoyed that you're annoyed. Actually, I'm kind of pissed off. Like I got, I was able to access the anger that I felt in that moment, which I couldn't help. I did, whether it was, it was right to feel angry about him getting upset with me. I felt it and I gave it back to him. and. I felt really good about it because I expected, I think I've always been scared to do that in circumstances with men because I feel like they'll go like, what the fuck? You're not allowed to get mad at me. I'm at like, and then, and then break up with me. Mm. But instead he said, um, you know, I'm just like really tired and I don't feel good. And I was like, yeah, like all of a sudden. I didn't give a fuck about the thing he was upset at me about. I like apologized already. I let myself off the hook for it, even though I had previously felt so guilty. Mm -hmm. I also was like, let him off the hook for being uh, what I thought was maybe overreacting to this thing that I didn't think deserved that. And I was like, of course, I'll, then we got a Snickers and he was fine. <laughs> like <laughs> Snickers or so like, wrong. it's like the commercial. Self. Yes. Yes. Mm. But Great. not taking things personally is a really, interesting um but can we look at thing. that that little uh thing you read uh, like closer if like imagine if shot. that was an actual person <laughs> trying to give you advice and they're like don't take anything personally if someone shoots you just let it if someone shoots <laughs> you in the head it doesn't mean let it go it doesn't mean they shouldn't be punished for it but you don't need to but be like I i'm a bad person because i got shot i'm what? a bad person because i got molested i'm a bad person because i got into this traffic collision like it doesn't it's not about you that person yeah, ran the stoplight that person oh, had road oh, rage oh. against you and shot you because they have issues it's not you what am I supposed to do with that though? Like, I get so if Let what if I'm not the hook, what if be, I'm not a person that would say, "Oh, it was my fault that that person." Well, then you don't shot need that advice. The then you don't need that advice. This is for people who take things personally and who think everything is their fault and think they can control things and other people. Here's an example Knock to close yeah, the loop or get... go back to the infidelity <laughs> cheating thing. I wanted to say this earlier. I remember learning that Tommy Lee cheated on Pamela Anderson and I was in my very first relationship ever and I was and this like this is when she used to wear makeup <gasps> yeah yes I was like <laughs> you can cheat like the hottest woman in the world at this time mm. can get cheated on okay yes. it has nothing to do with her this guy is just a cheater he's a bad guy like she didn't do anything wrong I would wrong. say he's not a bad guy but that's well, he, I, he I have lied a lot of empathy and, for cheaters he he lied to her and broke their marriage vow. Let's just say you can't argue that. They did not have an open thing. Yes. So Yes. So it had nothing to do with her. Right. She can't take it personally. Like, all right, Tommy has this addiction or whatever the fuck or needed this thing. Mm -hmm. That's not that's not my fault that he cheated. Right. right? Uh-huh. Yeah, I can that's see that. Personally. A lot of people might might make it their fault. And it's important to not take it personally in that way. But I still don't find the example of getting shot in the head and then <laughs> whatever the fuck forgiving the guy for shooting you. You don't forgive. It doesn't mean about forgiveness. It just means like, don't think like, why was I in the wrong place at the wrong time? Uh -huh. What did I do to that guy that made him want to shoot me? Like, how could I have done so things differently? Fault. Like, don't, a yeah, don't, don't punish yourself. yourself on top of our already what But isn't it like you. what what that person did had nothing to do with you? You were yes. just shot randomly. Correct. Yes, it's Correct. totally random. Yeah, yes. so it, the, the knowing that doesn't help me at all. It makes right, me feel you're worse. Still yeah. Oh, you're so still like dead. it doesn't matter what you do. Someone's still going to shoot yeah, you. Yeah, poor Selena. She's like, well, I think I got shot because I'm amazing, and my fan club president like <laughs> thought I was so amazing that she had to like take my soul. Yeah, but they're like, no, you can't have that. You're just random. <laughs> you're not that great. You just got shot because you just sucks got shot too. Yeah, yeah. Let Selena have it. Yeah, this guy. I don't like this guy. I'm taking it personally it's that he wrote over this book. It's very oversimplistic. I can yes. see why you don't like it. And impractical. I like it because it is so simplistic. And it, it, I think you need to read the book. It's very easy. I've to read. read it. Oh, you have? I own it. Oh, <laughs> okay. Yes. I loaned it to you. No, there should be like a subheading that's like, obviously, take all of this shit with a grain of salt. No one can do this perfectly. No yeah. one can do it perfectly. Final thought. Let's do top one, bottom one. 
because I had an idea for a segment today because I was doing tra- I was traveling all day and I was at a gate for so long. I wanted to figure out top one, bottom one type of person who you're sitting at a gate with for a really <laughs> long time. Like you have to sit next to this person for oh, a couple hours I have a at bottom a gate. Because I was oh, at a gate okay. too. Okay, please start with bottom. Bottom one is somebody who is coughing and just oh. can't stop coughing. Hell. This per I was at the Acknowledge gate. Acknowledge that you're coughing a lot. Right. No, this person and was with someone else, and the other, and the person that they were with was even like, "Can you please just take it down a notch?" Like oh, they said that. No, I can tell they oh, were thinking oh, that. Yeah. This person was like performatively coughing. Like she was like, "I need to get it out." And it was I. I everyone in the oh, whole right. terminal was, my was like, "Are you going to go on the plane with us now with that?" And not wearing a mask. I I didn't even look at her. I couldn't I couldn't even go look at her. But oh my God. I, I got to assume she wasn't wearing a mask. But it didn't feel like COVID coughing. It, it was either like long COVID, like I've been, I had COVID, but it kind of felt like um, I am a sickly older person cough, even though she wasn't that old. Ugh. So I wasn't really worried, like from a COVID standpoint or whatever. But I was just like, how? It's like, gross. where's the shame? Where like when I sneeze, yes. when I sneeze in public, I cover my mouth. I try to make it not very loud. This person is like, I am going to let everybody in this entire vicinity understand that I am going through a cough. It's almost really? okay. You do it to like clear the space around them. Yeah, it's performative. Yeah. In that this way. is this is this is what we're getting at. My bottom one is also performative, and this is not maybe my bottom bottom, but this is an annoying thing. A mother or a father showing their young baby um, through the window the planes. And look at that plane. (laughs) And look at that man with the orange. Stop being so loud. Your baby can hear you. Babies have great hearing. You're performing as a great parent for everyone around us. We get it. You're a very involved parent. You're really good at being a parent. (laughs) Your kids are going to be grow up to be better than other kids. You You definitely don't regret this choice. (laughs) Exactly. Yes, Anya. Thank you. (laughs) It's just like, uh, listen, I definitely think that is important. I actually really admire when I see a parent do it. Today, I saw a parent doing it, and she was doing it at a volume that I respected, and I thought it was such a beautiful thing that, man, this woman has been traveling with this kid all day long, and she still has the energy to be so enthusiastic and so adorable with her kid at at, at this time of day, and like, I knew this woman had been through it. So I thought it was like lovely that she was still like, now, how many planes are out there? And like doing all that, but when it's loud... And you're yes. trying to let us all know what a great mom you are. Here's my new theory and a little um, thing that people aren't going to like to hear. If you're a mom or a dad and you play this I'm not selfish card and that's why your parent is like, I'm, I'm just like, I was tired of being selfish. Have I said this already? You're still selfish. You're not No one has a baby and then suddenly is like, I'm going to start volunteering for Greenpeace. They don't start being more selfless citizens. They're just less selfless about themselves. And now they're putting everything on a kid that looks like them. It's an extension of themselves. You're not not selfless. Even people with narcissistic personality disorder um, can... Do they, that with their children. They can, love be having kids them. because yes. it's themselves. So like, I'm not giving an award to you for, for being like, I'm yes, I know you're not bathing much anymore and you don't dress well anymore <laughs> and you look bedraggled all the time. I'm not giving you an award for like, I don't care about the way I look anymore because I'm focused on this thing. It's like, the thing is you. And the yes. thing didn't exist till you made it. So if if you were, if you, there are some parents that have kids and go, oh my God, the world's fucked. I'm going to start like volunteering for, um, climate change activism. And right. like, I'm trying to save the world that I can get behind. It snapped you into being like, I need to save this planet. Again, it's selfish because it's for your kid that looks like you. And that's why you want to save the planet. You didn't give yeah. a fuck about the planet before there was a kid on the planet that looked like you and that you made. So it's still selfish, but this is what bothers me. Walking around with a kid and showing them off or whatever is no different than walking around with like a painting that you painted. I mean, like, look at my painting. <laughs> Don't you love my painting? Yes. Isn't it so beautiful? Yes. Um, oh, I also hate with kids when when parents force you 
to become a part of the little game they're playing. Oh, really? Oh, like when, yes. when parents are like, look at the plane, look at the plane. And then they go like, isn't the plane nice? Like something like that. Oh, they never involve me. I, uh, I would like to be involved actually. Or when oh, you're you at a friend's I house and their kids are running around and they're like, do you think you want to tell Anya what they do? It's like, oh, do oh. I have to do this now? Blanket <laughs> statement. Your kid doesn't have to say thank you to me. <laughs> I don't need it. And I don't, don't have need to hug me. To say goodbye to me. They don't need to hug me. They don't need to kiss me. Your kid needs to have boundaries. Yes. Your kid can be rude if it wants. I don't need to give a present to a kid and get a thank you back. And if you do need to get your kid to give a thank you to me, don't make them like stand in front of me and say it. Just like later on, tell them, hey, you should have thanked her. Like, don't bring me into yeah, it. Like, I'm I want busy. this thing. <laughs> I feel like stand there and wait be. for your kid to be like, I'm not going to say it. And then it gets awkward because the kid, now I hate your kid because he's refusing to say thank you to yes. me for the gift I brought. Okay, go I back love... to the top one and bottom one. Okay, okay, okay so my awesome. bottom one. Okay, gate. Okay, uh, person at the gate, Anya. Let's at least favor person. Yeah, okay, speakerphone, FaceTime. Please, oh, the world, yeah. you're not that dumb. You also aren't that poor. We can all afford $20 headphones. Just pack them with you. And if you're not going to pack them, don't do the then FaceTime. you don't get to do it. Walk yeah. away from the gate. Do, do not My be so self-involved that you think just we, broke we up with the guy. <laughs> and I, I was like so on on board for this guy. And then she told me that he takes Zoom calls in public. Oh my god! And I said, without I headphones, go, it was as if she told me that he hits her. I go, <laughs> you cannot be with this person. He says it, the word. She goes, he just did it once, and I go, once is enough. He's gonna do it again. Yeah, you need to leave him right now. Not, you can't make excuses. You cannot for that. be with someone who takes Facetime yeah. calls in public. Anyone. This is and what is the protocol to to stop this? Because we need. I think in, a, in an airport, I feel safe that no one's going to pull a gun on me because they've gone through screening. Mm -hmm. So I do feel safe in an airport. I would love for someone to be talking on the speakerphone at an airport it, 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 within vicinity of me, as long as they're a white person. Because you would slam them. Because I would slam them. If, they're, if they are um, a person of a different race, I'm not going to say anything. Yeah. Because I'm, that's I just not- I always think about you. I'm, I'm not going to do like, it. How can I be Nikki? What would Nikki do? I know exactly <laughs> what you do. I would I like think. to do it to someone of a different race. But I feel like they would say, I'm, you're just doing this because I'm black. Yeah. And then it's I would say to them, list? no, I'm doing this because I'm the reason I wouldn't do it is because you're black. Yeah. That would be racist. But I, I but I do. But I definitely wouldn't do it to a black person. No. But I like a white person. I'm dying for you to be on your speakerphone <laughs> in front of me. I'm dying for what it. What about like, a child oh. or someone like this just happened? Flight. Just the other day, a guy listening to the football game loudly as we're oh. deplaning. So we are deplaning. So we're all going to say goodbye to each other soon. But we're... Oh, the perfect, doors perfect time. Because you're on your way out. Yeah. You don't yeah. have to be around them. What would you do? If it's you, you're trapped in there, you're still on the tarmac, you're still taxiing. Is that necessary? I mean... For, That's what I'd say. Okay. i go, is that necessary? And then i just look at him. And then wait. And then he'd it's, go, what? It's I the go, big game. It's the big yeah, game. Yeah, I mean, for me, that would be a moment of bonding for me. I think I'd be like, what's the score with that? But if it was something else, like if they were, some, if they were listening to... Yeah, this to guy thought he was doing a, a public TED talk. service. And someone's sure. going to say, Nikki, didn't you sing Taylor Swift songs on a plane with a bunch of people? <laughs> yes, I did, because the the flight attendant started it. Oh. Yeah. It was okay? sanctioned. And, and it was it was a group of us, and it was obnoxious, and I'll own up to that, but I would never do something as a single person to be like, everyone has to listen to this. Mm -hmm. That is a personality disorder, and there needs to be a protocol for it. I think maybe the thing to do is to turn up your phone all the way and listen to something. Oh, I out, was going to uh, do that. Yeah. I think that's the thing to do. It was too passive. No, aggressive. no, I one almost did it to their level. Yeah, no, Why because it's that? obviously when calling you, it out, and everyone around would know the joke. What you're doing? I, I would love know. to see I, that in, in practice. And I would do the hamster dance out. song. Do you remember the hamster <laughs> dance song? <laughs> so if someone, so you you lived in New York for a long time, and when when someone's on the subway and they were just listening to music, like you can't do it on the subway, you're gonna get shanked. Yeah, you'll get shanked. So like. Uh, doing the same. So you're you're saying you'd engage and in a it's battle. Really a white person on the side. <laughs> what did I say? You can't figure it out. I'm just saying it isn't. You're trapped in a tube you for a while. So let's say you're in the subway. Yeah, tops. Let's say you're in the subway in Ireland. Yeah. Okay, and someone's well, playing music on their cell phone. No, I wouldn't do it in another country because I don't want to be oh. an American. That's like. I would say, uh -huh. I have something to, to yell at you about. <laughs> okay, and I will pretend top, to be Canadian. <laughs> okay, top, top, top traveling um, top person on the case. just happened fire. yesterday. Okay, we were merging into the boardy line. 
And a gentleman, and I felt this guy trying to edge in front of me. I'm like, God damn it. I was definitely here first. And, he, and then I just go, who gives a shit on you? Doesn't matter. Oh, I and that. I looked at him and he goes, after you. Oh. I like that guy. I like a guy uh, that's going to say after you. I and like the, that too. Yeah. Ironically, I did get stopped and the weirdest thing happened. They were like, your seat is broken, ma'am. You can't. I'm like, my seat is broken? <laughs> and they go, yeah, you, it was on the way to Vegas, Nikki, to see you. And uh, Vegas? I go, Vegas. Yeah, and the guy also, the ticket agent goes, you're not checked in. I go, I am checked in. This is my boarding pass on my phone. You can't get this unless you check in. I am checked in. It was the second leg of a journey. So he goes, you're not checked in. You didn't check in. You need to check in. I go, okay, I don't know what to tell you. This is my boarding pass. I did check in 24 hours ago. And he goes, well, your seat's broken. I have to give you a new boarding pass. Oh my it God. took forever. And the guy behind me, I looked at him, I go, are you regretting your decision? Because he left, <laughs> he let me go first. And he's like, no, oh, no, no. Right. That's Don't funny. even worry. He goes, take your time. He was so nice. My but favorite one, very quickly, is someone when you are looking for to charge your phone at the gate and someone goes, that one's not working. This one over yes. here works. Oh, like a helpful person. Just a helpful, oh, so tell nice. me where the charger is. Don't watch me struggle. Offer up yours and like an area for yours. And, um, and, and someone that doesn't like scoff at me when I leave all my bags by myself and they don't go like, oh, what is she going to do? What's going on? Like, just calm down. I do this all the time. We're going to be fine. Yeah. 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 Uh, my top one is, I think you're going to really like this one. I okay. think you're going to change yours when you hear oh, mine. Really? Okay. Yeah. My <laughs> top one is when I'm with somebody and I'm talking to them and I feel like I'm being particularly entertaining and then there's someone else who is hearing what I'm saying and enjoying and laughing a little bit at me being funny with like Allie or something. Yes, that's really nice. Yeah. I get that with drivers sometimes too. when I get the driver to oh, laugh. I yeah, feel yeah. really good because he's not supposed to be listening, but he gets, he yes. knows. And then sometimes they can't help themselves and they laugh out loud. They're like, oh no, now they know that I was listening this whole time and enjoying that. Yes. Oh, I like that. I do like a making strangers laugh. Yes. Sometimes like, and that goes into kind of almost like putting yourself on speakerphone. Like you're kind of performing in a way like, oh shit. I think no! you just got busted. Yeah. But I'm talking to my wife. But you're talking loud enough that someone could hear. I'm just, tell I'm just telling my wife, look at the plane. You know, look at the <laughs> plane outside. How many planes are there? <laughs> All right, Noah, what's your what's your top one? Um, okay, well, I don't think I said my bottom. My bottom one is oh, anyone yeah. who's grooming themselves. Like Ew. clipping their nails or anything Oh, get like the that. fuck Gross. out of here with What if that they're shit? like eating their hangnail, which is what I did today? <laughs> that's that's different. Like w once I start hearing the click of the nail cutter, oh, you're dead oh to okay, me. Yeah. I, um, I have done it before, but I put a sweatshirt over my hand to do it. And you can, <laughs> I muffle it. And so it can't spring anywhere. That's I'd rather fine, you do that then than on the plane. <laughs> okay. I'm, oh, I'm de deeply ashamed. Okay. And mm -hmm. then um, my top is anyone with an animal. Please come stay next to me so I can look at what's inside uh -huh. your animal oh. carrier. Oh. I need that to lower my blood pressure. Yeah. You are welcome here. That's a good one. <laughs> oh, that's, that's a really cute. good one. All right. Well, that was fun. Great to see I you, love Brian. All of our top ones. Yeah. Yeah, that was sweet. That was we a good, all just a good went one. Togetherness and connection and, and like humanness. Yeah. Yeah, we just want people to be nice and kind and gentle. Yeah, but let's look out for each other more. Yeah, let's do that. All right. And and if you get shot in the head, don't take it personally. <laughs> yeah. Recover first. Why are you knocking on wood? Uh, I didn't say you. my superstition. I don't know. I just... Just anything? It's just my safety. Okay. All right. Well, um, thank you so much for being here, Brian. Uh, come see us on tour. Don't be kuh. And just don't take it personally. 